So now we understand the second derivative test for classifying an optimum. But what if the second derivative vanishes? What if that test fails? Shrug. In the past, you might have been taught that it's just a test, and if it fails, you don't know whether it's a max or a min. But we can do better than that, can't we? Since we understand that the second derivative test is really using information from the Taylor series, we can go beyond the second derivative. Taylor series goes beyond the second derivative, and so can we. If we assume a function f with a critical point at x equals a, we consider the Taylor expansion about a. We look at f of a plus h. Write out the Taylor series for that. What is that? That's f of a plus the derivative times h plus 1 over 2, the second derivative times h squared, the third order term, the fourth order term. Keep going with that. If we have a critical point at x equals a, that means the first derivative vanishes. If we have a degenerate critical point, if that second derivative also vanishes, well, we just move to the next term in the Taylor expansion. That would be the third derivative. Oh, so what? There's a, there's a third derivative test? If the third derivative is non-zero, then that means the function locally looks like a cubic. It looks like h cubed with some constant out in front. And you would have neither a max nor a min. Oh, but wait a minute. What if the third derivative vanishes? Well, of course. We move to the next term. We move to the fourth derivative as being determinative of a degenerate max or a min, depending on the sign. The Taylor expansion of your function is meant to reveal local information. And that's exactly what we're trying to do when classifying a critical point. Let's consider a few examples of this. Examples that go beyond the second derivative. The following functions have degenerate critical points at the origin. That means the second derivatives also vanish. Let's try to classify them, whether they're maxima, minima, neither. First up, let's look at the function sine squared of x times log of absolute value of cosine 3x. Ooh, what's that going to be? Well, let's see. We have sine squared of x. So for x close to 0, sine of x is x plus big O of x cubed. But I have to square this, so I have two copies of these. Next up, we have the log of absolute value cosine of 3x. For small x, the absolute value doesn't matter. We can expand out that cosine of 3x as 1 minus quantity 3x squared divided by 2 plus big O of x to the fourth. Now, the reason why I took an extra term in that cosine is because we're going to take the natural log of that, and I've got something of the form log of 1 plus stuff, where that stuff begins with negative 9x squared over 2. Taking the leading order terms of these three factors gives us what? I have a sine of x that has leading order term x, but I have another one of those, another leading order term of x. And then when I use the Taylor series for log of 1 plus something, the leading order term that I'm going to get is minus 9x squared over 2. Multiplying these leading order terms together gives me minus 9 halves x to the fourth. Then I have the higher order terms, which you can check all fit into a big O of x to the sixth. So, knowing that this function near the origin locally looks like minus 9 halves x to the fourth plus higher order terms, we can say that that critical point at the origin is a critical point. First derivative is zero. It's a degenerate critical point. The second derivative is zero. In fact, the third derivative is zero. It's the fourth derivative where this function turns on. And that fourth derivative, it's negative. That means that we have a local maximum, as one can verify by graphing the function and examining what is happening near zero. Okay, well, that was cool, but it's absolutely not obvious just from looking at that function that we have a local maximum at the origin. 
The same thing is true with our next example. Consider the function 5 plus x to the fourth divided by the cube root of quantity 1 minus 2x cubed. What are we going to do with this at the origin? If I look at it, if I consider that numerator 5 plus x to the fourth, I would guess that I have a degenerate critical point at the origin, and it's going to be like a local minimum because I've got that positive fourth derivative with that x to the fourth term. But then I'm dividing by this cube root of stuff, and I don't know what that's going to do to it. How are we going to deal with that? Oh, we can use the binomial series for that denominator, since that's really quantity 1 minus 2x cubed to the negative one-third power. So, to write out the Taylor expansion, I take the numerator, quantity 5 plus x to the fourth, then using the binomial series for that denominator, I get 1, then negative one-third, the exponent, times quantity negative 2x cubed, and then my next term is going to be in a big O of x to the sixth, because I take that negative 2x cubed and square it. Okay, now I've got some multiplication to do here. The lowest order term is the 5 times the 1. That's 5. What's the next order term? Well, it's going to be 5 times negative 1 third times negative 2. That's positive 10 thirds times x cubed. And then my next term is going to be x to the fourth. And then I've got a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to toss all of it into a big O of x to the fourth. Now I have that zeroth order term, but the first order term, the second order term, they vanish. That means we have a degenerate critical point at the origin. But the third derivative is non-zero, and it's positive, but that doesn't really matter so much. This means that this function locally is cubic. It's neither a max nor a min. You could say that it's increasing for positive x and it's decreasing for negative x, but whatever. It's not a max or a min. It locally looks like a cubic function. Again, if we graph this function out, we can see that behavior near the origin. To summarize, the big idea is that we can use Taylor expansion to see what is happening locally near a critical point, to get information beyond the second derivative test.